There is something strange happening in Serbia. A shadow hanging over the Balkan nation. Rumors of the Wagner mercenary group recruiting. Russian propaganda spreading. Symbols of war being sold as souvenirs. Do you get a lot of people buying these? Yeah, it's the most seller t-shirt. The most, the biggest seller? Yeah. Wow. We sell that t-shirt and this, that, most. Everything what they sell, these two, it's a biggest seller. Am amazing, amazing. And it's everywhere. Rising out of the Serbian countryside, green and gold domes, a physical monument to Russian influence. They call this Putin's church. And inside, a double-headed eagle, a Russian flag, and for sale, just under a pound, key rings bearing a Z, the symbol of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We've come to Belgrade to try and unravel the mystery as to why so many people here support Russia's invasion of Ukraine. It's thought more than 70% back Moscow over Kyiv. There are many competing ideas. We won't forgive you our murdered children. It is like you put a drug dealer among the children and do nothing. Russian side was never in the history do anything wrong to Serbian people. They will weaponize anything they can. I mean, if they had a chess set these days, they'd throw the pieces at you. Tens of thousands of Ukrainians have arrived here since the war started. Many more Russians, often opponents of the Putin regime. They have not always found the arrival easy. Yuri fled Russia and Maria, Ukraine, because of the invasion. But it soon caught up with them, painted on the front door of their apartment block. Yeah, you can see it. We are sure that those two letters were drawn by our neighbors because mm. that exact neighbor that asked us where we're from, he started, you know, to wear this T-shirt with the Z letter. <laughs> And, uh, and other neighbors, actually, in, in our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Within weeks, neighbors called at the door, accusing them of making noise. Then this happened. Начал говорить Ukrainian, Ukraine, моему парню, он сказал your и все в этом роде и на этой почве я и начала снимать в целом то видео, потому что это не является нормальным. Maria called the police, but she was arrested and charged with disturbing public order. She shows us the injuries she says she received that night. And it's not the only time the couple have been attacked. In December, four men hit Yuri and grabbed his anti-war flag. They then posted this photo in front of a mural dedicated to the Wagner Group, the same ones accused of recruiting. And this is the flag that was on my shoulders. And uh, one of those guys, uh, I guess, in those sneakers, that, that one of the guys that attacked me, <laughs> because I just can, you know, I just, I just remembered his shoes. <laughs> What's interesting is that Yuri and Maria say the people who attacked them were not Russian, but locals. There is a battle for hearts and minds taking place on the streets of Belgrade with competing influences from within and without. And one seems to be winning. There is no doubt that Russia has an increasing influence on Serbian society, on its people and its politics. But where does it come from? Is it legitimate interest? Is it political interference? 
Or is it, as some people suggest, something more nefarious? A form of infiltration? What I wrote here, everything will go to plan. Slava Bogu. Sve za majku Rusiju i za cara Putina. Ko što sam rekao, sve za majku Srbiju i majku Rusiju. To je jedno. Vlado Stanić's devotion to Russia and the man he calls Tsar Putin is absolute. In 2015, that devotion led him to join a war that was not his own. He refuses to talk about what he did in Ukraine, but was jailed on his return to Serbia. From Moscow, I went to the direct to Donbass. I reconnected to the citizens, of course, our brothers in Serbia and our brothers in Russia, together with the team. I went from my heart, and that was a great joy and joy. And I was doing the same thing today. What can I tell you? Ukraine, Ukraine is Russia. Ukrainian people are all Russian people. And now I can go to the direct help of the brothers of the Russians to fight against fascism and nazism. You say the Ukrainians are fascists, but for many people around the world, it's the man in your T-shirt, it's Vladimir Putin and the Russians who are the fascists. No, Russia is not. Objasnimo ovaj Rusija konkretno. Tamo nema fašizma, nema nacizma. Rusija je oslobodila cijelu Evropu od fašizma i nacizma. Rusija je sveta zemlja. Sveta zemlja. He is an extreme example of a wider phenomenon. A sense of pan-slavism. The idea that Russia and Serbia have historic and modern links is painted on the walls of this city. But there is another story this graffiti can tell. That not of love for Russia, but of hatred for the West. So, tell me about this building. What, what was this? This is a building that was hit during the NATO bombardment. This is a building of radio and television in Serbia, in which a few hundred people died during the emission of the NATO bombardment about the NATO bombardment. From NATO bases in Italy, aircraft from a total of 13... In 1999, NATO launched an 11-week bombing campaign against Yugoslavian forces. A response to the ethnic cleansing of Albanians in Kosovo. The airstrikes eventually brought an end to the brutality and bloodshed, but not before they had left an indelible mark on the streets of Belgrade and in the minds of its people. It's not uh, support uh, uh, Russia against Ukraine. Uh, uh, it's a support uh, uh, Russia against NATO and the West who bombed uh, our country. There is something else. This is the moment in 2008 when Kosovo declared independence from Serbia. The West recognized, even encouraged it while Russia used its seat on the UN Security Council to block its recognition there. We have to understand that um, Russia is um, a country who supports Serbian in other ways, example in uh, 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 UN, uh, to protect uh, uh, um, Kosovo and uh, protect Serbian uh, integrity, and the people uh, of Serbia uh, are understand that, and, um, how to say, they are uh, zahvalni. Uh, they grateful, uh, appreciate uh, that uh, effort from from Russian side. And, you know, uh, Russian side was never in the history um, um, uh, attacked Serbia or do anything wrong to Serbian people. Although it's fair to say not everyone agrees with that. Chedomir Stojkovic is Maria and Yuri's lawyer and campaigns against Russian activities in Serbia. It is like you put a drug dealer among children and do nothing. Russia is a drug dealer here in the political way. For 15 years, Russians put uh, uh, agents here, money here. They uh, conduct huge operation uh, in the intelligence service. They start uh, to buying some media and, to, uh, and buying uh, news editors. And through that, uh, after the war in uh, uh, Ukraine start, they start to uh, conduct brainwashing 
of uh, Serbian nation. Everything what happened in this case is actually consequence of that Russia propaganda or that Russia influence. We can see everything, every consequence of that hybrid uh, influence of Russia and that I call it uh, hybrid occupation of Serbia. Now, many of those accusations are hard to check, but there is one area we can examine. So one of the main accusations is levelled against the tabloid press, that they take a pro-Moscow line. And here's a few examples of papers from around the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And some of the story choices, the choices of words, are very interesting. Here, Zelensky, America betrayed us. That is referring to a speech he gave on the 25th of February. Now, we've looked back at it. And that is categorically not what he meant and what he was saying. Here's another one. Cowards from the West flee Ukraine. This is on the second day of the invasion. The idea that that was what this paper thought was most important to tell its readers. And then we've got a headline here, a front page here, which has become infamous. This was from two days before the start of the invasion. And it says, Ukraine attacks Russia. We stand behind, behind uh, Serbia, I can, I can say that. We approached a number of papers. Only one agreed to speak to us. It was the Serbian Telegraph whose headline on day two of the war focused on Western cowards fleeing rather than the invasion itself. They say that wouldn't happen now. Did you find people's feelings about President Putin have changed since the war started? Has your editorial policy changed? Yes, but, uh, like a Serbia, Srpski Telegraph as a newspaper, every, every time uh, when we make articles about Ukraine, we called it uh, Russian's uh, aggression to, to Ukraine. Not war, not special operation, aggression. Uh, and so that, that's, a, a, is that a policy that's changed over the course of uh, the war? It change, uh, war changed our policy in that matter that uh, all, all people say that, uh, see that Russia attack uh, an independent country, Ukraine. Uh -huh. But we are against sanctions because we think that uh, sanctions does, doesn't uh, work. One of the accusations made against the media in general is that they are pro-Putin. There is one paper that it's alleged that is literally just paid for by the Russians. Do you think there are some that are, some newspapers are directly funded or get their money from Russian sources? Well, maybe some some internet portals or something like that, but uh, mainstream media, no, I think no. They are they're pro-Russian for other reasons, not because they're. Well, they are pro-Russians because of their feelings or their or feelings of their readers. Some would question that, although again, it is hard to prove. One thing that is not in doubt: that NATO has never been forgiven, certainly at this paper. You know these people, Madeleine Albright, Tony Blair, Bill Clinton. It said, uh, "We won't forgive you our murdered children." And that that is still clearly very clear, very clear. Very it's important. twenty twenty four years past, but uh, when you see these pictures, uh, here we have a face who appears quite often: President Trump or former President Trump. President Trump is uh, one of. Serbs favorite president. He was ready to understand uh, Serbs, to understand what we what we thinking, why why we why is Kosovo so important for us. And that is where we come to the place that runs through all these theories. All roads lead to Kosovo. Srpska državnost je zapravo i započela na Kosovu. Krunisanje naših kraljeva i careva dogodilo se zapravo pre gotovo 1000 godina na Kosovu. If you have that destroyed building, it is reminder uh, and it's like, you know, wound that you scratch uh, every day. So it all comes down to Kosovo. This is our territory 1000 years and somebody comes there and says this is ours. For many Serbs, Kosovo holds a central place in their national story, going all the way back to the 12th century. It's said to have special religious significance. By the 1990s, years of ethnic tension had turned into open conflict that ended with NATO airstrikes and the eventual declaration of independence that was blocked by Russia. 
It is in that context that Vlad sells his Z t-shirts and Putin mugs. You know, we, we in Serbia, we are, remember uh, 20 years ago what has been here, when the America bombarding. It's actually not NATO, it's America. And this war, it's not war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. This war is between Russia and America. And we give the support from this guy because we, we remember bombarding and that. Interesting. Actually, it's a very sad story, but well, Kosovo, Kosovo now, who, who have the base in Kosovo? Yeah. America. Christopher Hill is the US ambassador. He's been involved in the Balkans for decades. I was speaking to a souvenir seller this morning called Vlad, and he was selling Z t-shirts and President Putin riding a bear and Putin mugs. And I said to him, why are you selling this stuff? And his answer wasn't that we love Putin. His answer was because he's against America. Well, I'm not sure I can make Vlad happy on this, but I think a lot of Serbs have come to understand that the U.S. is really in their corner. No question this issue of the NATO bombing in 99 plays for many Serbs like it just happened yesterday. But when you look at the degree to which Serbs have welcomed American investment in Serbia, if you look at the degree to which Serbs are engaged in sort of American culture, American sports, uh, you know, I think you'll, you'll see among Serbs a sense that America is, is a friend. It's our job to make sure they understand that we are a major donor here. We've provided not only humanitarian assistance, but also economic development assistance. And I think we're going to see more of that in the future. This idea that it is dangerous to anger empires or great powers, but also might be too dangerous to be in their embrace, for those who closely watch Russia's influence in Serbia, there is not one simple solution as to what is going on. We've heard from different people different theories about Russian influence. One is it's historical, there's a fraternal link. One is it's engineered, the Russians have been playing hybrid warfare. One is it's to do with NATO, really, it's to do with Kosovo. Where do you see the truth of that in the context of our conversation? Well, the second two element, pro the, the unpopularity of uh, NATO and uh, Russia acting as they like to call it as a spoiler power, probably have more to do with uh, Russian presence in the country than any uh, ancient uh, historical ties. This uh, notion about uh, pro-Russian uh, Serbs and this uh, mythical alliance between two Slavic and Orthodox ties which perseveres for the past 200 years, no matter the objective uh, circumstances, uh, I think it is, it is a myth. The current uh, level of partnership between the two countries is much more rooted in uh, in, modern, in more modern rather than any uh, distant uh, historical uh, factors. I mean, it, is much, it has much more to do with, uh, with some of the frustrations of the uh, Serbian population with bitter memories of the 1990s and, of course, uh, what has been alpha and omega of uh, Serbia's foreign policy, the unresolved Kosovo dispute, than with anything else for that matter. You see, this is a live debate, one that brings Serbs to the streets. An EU-led process stalled for years has been reinvigorated, partly by the war in Ukraine. But any solution would need difficult compromises from all sides. Recently, it led to fights inside Parliament. And this political turmoil leads us neatly to a final theory on Russian influence, that it's used as a negotiating tool by the Serbian government. If the West is uh, scared of Russia and uh and the local leadership convinces the West that they are the only one who can keep uh, Russian presence in the country at a level that can be tolerated, then they can uh, get a political acquiescence for the West for their uh, own uh, regime survival here. Is there a point, though, that by using Russian interference and the threat of Russian interference and the popularity of Russia amongst the population, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, that Russia genuinely does become popular and does get that influence because it's been played up. Well, there is, uh, of course, uh, this uh, logic of a double-edged sword. 
where, where of course playing the Russian card can be useful for the local leads, but at the same time it can become a potential impediment and a potential source of vulnerability. This region is, uh, as some like to describe it, uh, Europe's uh, soft underbelly, a point of uh, vulnerability because part of Europe but not uh, fully there yet. So this is, a, this is a pressure point, they can push here and they can use that to achieve goals elsewhere. Ab absolutely, I mean, there it is uh, evident, no, bet no better proof of this is uh, Russia's involved, uh, involvement in a Kosovo dispute. Because if you accuse the West of uh, hypocrisy, then of course you score a point for being brave enough and for being strong enough to say no to the West, so a good optic. However, it is even better over the fact that that way you frustrate and undermine the West, while at the same time you have a precedent to invoke in territorial conflicts that happen in the post-Soviet space. So, what of Wagner, the shadowy mercenaries rumoured to be active here? Well, no one we spoke to said their influence in Serbia went beyond a few murals and links with fringe groups. Then, after we left, the president of Kosovo made the extraordinary claim that they were smuggling weapons and uniforms for a land grab, as happened in Crimea. Days later, far-right protesters took to the streets of Belgrade. Their leader, Damjan Knezovic, has been pictured at Wagner's St. Petersburg headquarters. We prefer Russia. The Serbian president responded by saying he didn't need advice from Wagner on Kosovo, calling the protesters anti-Serbian. A number of arrests were made. It said one man had a sniper rifle. Events are moving in an increasingly unpredictable direction. For now, the only thing of which we can be certain is that Russian influence in Serbia is on the rise. As for the various theories why? The truth of it is, all of these things are interlinked. Whatever the historical reality, many people here do seem to feel a connection with Russia, although that probably has more to do with recent past than any glorious history. But in the end, that idea does have power, and it is utilised, some would say weaponised by Moscow to achieve their ends and frustrate those of the West. And that involves poking the open sore that is Kosovo the scars of that conflict of the NATO bombing can still be seen here in Belgrade. The end result is that more people in Serbia support Russia's invasion of Ukraine than anywhere else in Europe. And that is why young men travel from this country to go and fight in Ukraine. And Ukrainians, when they come to Belgrade, are finding themselves under attack.